Welcome back, everyone. In this second installment of our journey, we continue to explore the captivating city of Florence. If you haven't watched the first part yet, be sure to check it out to immerse yourself fully in the rich history and enchanting beauty of this remarkable place. In this episode, we delve deeper into Florence's cultural heritage, its iconic art and architecture, and the profound influence it had on the world during the Renaissance. So, join us as we uncover more fascinating aspects of Florence, a city that continues to inspire and leave a lasting impression on all who visit. Let's jump right in. The statues of the Bell Tower, for example, were not always given such a prominent position. Completed in 1433, they were initially tucked away in the alcoves on the facade, hidden from the view of the Bell Tower. It wasn't until later, when Donatello gained recognition for his work, that they were brought to the forefront. This move, paying homage to the master Donatello, exemplifies the significance that the people of Florence attributed to their artists and art in general. With the Renaissance came a new concept of sculpture, as artists embraced the themes of ancient art, such as the representation of the nude male form, busts, and equestrian statues. Here, in the Gallery of the Academia, we have the privilege of witnessing one of the greatest masterpieces of Renaissance art, Michelangelo's David. Michelangelo, hired at a young age by Lorenzo the Magnificent, had the opportunity to study the Medici collection of ancient statues. This profound influence, combined with his exceptional talent, led him to create this monumental statue, standing at an impressive height of 4.8 meters. Completed at the age of 30 after three years of meticulous work on a single block of marble, David has become an iconic symbol of Florence, representing not only sensuality but also immense strength and power. During the Renaissance, it was customary for aristocratic families to possess palaces, much like the Medici. These palaces, with their fortress-like appearances, were not meant to glorify the inhabitants but rather to ensure the stability of the family. In Florence, one family, the Antonori family, has resided in the same palace for 500 years. Marquis Piero Antonori graciously welcomes us into his private apartment, which holds a special place in his heart as it has been the working space of his ancestors throughout history. The palace's history is intertwined with that of the Medici, as Piero's ancestor Niccolo Antonori was a friend of the Medici family. It was through their connection that Niccolo secured the opportunity to purchase the palace, ensuring its legacy within the Antonori family for generations to come. The Antonori family's unwavering commitment to preserving their ancestral palace over the centuries is a testament to their deep respect for their heritage. Their dedication to the preservation of their ancestral palace goes beyond mere attachment to a physical structure. It represents a profound reverence for their heritage and a desire to honor the legacy of their ancestors. Each generation of the Antonori family has taken on the responsibility of maintaining and safeguarding this historical treasure, ensuring that it remains a symbol of their identity and connection to the past. As we walk through the halls adorned with exquisite artworks and rich tapestries, it becomes evident that the Antonori family's commitment extends beyond the preservation of the palace itself. They have meticulously preserved a collection of priceless artifacts and documents, each telling a story of their lineage and the history of Florence. In a world that often rushes forward, where traditions are sometimes overlooked or discarded, the Antonori family stands as a beacon of tradition and continuity. Their unwavering commitment to their ancestral palace serves as a reminder to us all of the importance of cherishing our roots and understanding the significance of our shared cultural heritage. As we conclude our journey through the Antonori Palace, I invite you to reflect on the value of preserving history and the cultural treasures that shape our collective identity. If you've enjoyed this exploration of Florence's rich heritage, I encourage you to subscribe to our channel and join our community. By subscribing, you'll stay updated with our latest videos and have the opportunity to engage with us through likes and comments, sharing your thoughts and insights. Thank you for joining us on this remarkable journey, and remember, the preservation of our heritage starts with each one of us. Together, let's celebrate and safeguard the treasures that connect us to our past and inspire us for generations to come. This document holds immense significance for our family. It is the last will and testament of Niccolo di Tommaso Antonori, a testament to his vision for future generations and the preservation of our ancestral palace. 
In this precious document, Niccolo expressed his fervent desire to keep the palace united and ensure it remains undivided. Throughout the generations, this responsibility has been passed down to the family's eldest son, allowing us to safeguard it in its original, pristine condition. Niccolo di Tommaso Antonori, the head of our wine empire established in 1385, has left an indelible mark on our family history. Today, as the current head of the empire, I oversee it alongside my three daughters. It has truly been a remarkable year, and I have carefully selected some exceptional wines to savor in the comfort of our own home. I believe they will age magnificently, just like the legacy of our family. Over the span of five centuries, the interior architecture of our palace has remained virtually untouched, exuding a timeless feudal elegance. It is as if the essence of 1506 still permeates our daily lives. Our family resides on the upper floor, the domain of nobility, where we warmly welcome guests. Meanwhile, the ground floor has been dedicated to commercial activities, a tradition that has endured through the ages. From 1506 to the present day, the remarkable preservation of our palace reflects our deep appreciation and admiration for the beauty of Renaissance architecture. This legacy has shaped our style and ensures a sense of continuity in our lives. The Antonori Palace stands as a testament to our commitment to maintaining its commercial activity, making it the only palace in Florence to have done so. Here, on the ground floor of our ancestral home, we take immense pride in our family's wine heritage. This place has become an institution in Florence, where, during the Renaissance, clients would purchase our exquisite wines through a small hatch. The wealth and influence of the great Florentine families were inseparable from their trade activities, which flourished in the vibrant streets of the Ultrano district. As we wander through the winding alleyways, lined with small houses and workshops, we catch a glimpse of Florence's rich tapestry of ancient professions and enduring traditions. This district has long been the beating heart of Florentine trade, serving as the epicenter of Europe's wool and silk industry. This particular silk workshop, belonging to the Ricci family, stands as a testament to the city's historical commercial prowess. Join us on this remarkable journey as we explore the intertwining threads of history, trade, and craftsmanship that have shaped the soul of Florence. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, leave a like, and share your thoughts and comments. Together, let's celebrate the timeless legacy of our ancestors and the vibrant spirit of this magnificent city. It stands alone in the world, operating today just as it did 250 years ago. During the Renaissance, Florence's noble families employed their own weavers, as wearing silk was a symbol of wealth. It was crucial to have the finest weavers at their disposal, just like the best sculptors and painters. This particular fabric was highly valued and treasured during the Renaissance, especially by nobles and wealthy families. Its distinctiveness lies in its exquisite craftsmanship and the use of rare and expensive natural colors. Only the elite could afford such luxury. In a corner of this workshop, you'll find a remarkable machine, the only one of its kind in existence. Designed by the great Leonardo da Vinci, the concept existed solely on paper for many years. It wasn't until the 18th century that the machine was finally constructed according to the master's blueprint. Leonardo observed the weaver's techniques and constantly sought ways to improve them. His invention, though mechanically simple, was a stroke of genius. It provided a revolutionary method for thread placement. What you see before you is the flawless realization of his vision, and we still utilize this unique piece on a daily basis. Leonardo da Vinci epitomized the quintessential Renaissance man. With boundless creativity and inventiveness, he excelled as a painter, sculptor, and architect. His visionary genius was so far ahead of his time that many of his ideas remained unrealized. Leonardo's passion for knowledge extended into the realm of science, where he fearlessly dissected human bodies to unravel the mysteries of human anatomy. He meticulously recorded his findings, leaving behind over 200 detailed anatomical charts, a testament to his precision and accuracy. His groundbreaking depictions of the spinal column, ribs, and pelvis were unparalleled in their accuracy. The Medici family's enduring legacy in Florence reverberated throughout every artistic field. Their extraordinary patronage propelled the city into the annals of art history. Painting, sculpture, and architecture flourished under their patronage, shaping Florence's artistic identity for eternity. 
The Renaissance era also witnessed a revolution in lifestyles, including the art of perfumery. The Officina di Santa Maria Novella was established by the Dominican friars, and its reputation soon transcended the walls of the convent. In 1612, the pharmacy opened its doors to the public with the support of the Medici family, becoming one of the oldest perfumeries in the world. While the fragrances available today at the Officina di Santa Maria Novella have evolved significantly since the Medici era, their rich heritage endures. During that time, master perfumers crafted bespoke fragrances, using the most exquisite essences for the great Florentine families. For the first time in history, perfume became a means of communication, creating a connection between one's own personality and that of others. Perfuming gloves was particularly fashionable during the Renaissance because the hand was the only permissible point of contact between men and women during greetings. There was a fascination with perfumes and the sensual gesture it represented. Returning to the Piazza della Signoria, the Palazzo Vecchio, once the seat of Medici power, now serves as Florence's town hall. In the 16th century, Cosimo I, the first Duke of Florence and Grand Duke of Tuscany, moved into the Palazzo Vecchio to showcase his authority and prestige. When Cosimo I decided to renovate the interior, he initially considered entrusting the project to either Michelangelo or Leonardo da Vinci. Eventually, Giorgio Vasari was chosen for the task. From then on, Vasari's name became synonymous with the splendor of the Medici and their ambition for conquest. His most remarkable creation in Florence is the Vasari Corridor, which connects two palaces, the Palazzo Vecchio in the heart of the city and the Palazzo Pitti on the other side of the Arno River. Imagine a passage, a lavishly adorned hall, stretching over a kilometer long, running alongside and spanning the Arno, weaving its way above Florence's alleyways and cutting through the city's palaces. Commissioned by Cosimo I in 1565, the corridor allowed him to traverse Florence incognito and safely reach the new Medici residence, the Palazzo Pitti. It was Cosimo's wife, Eleonora di Toledo, who purchased the Palazzo Pitti in 1549. The palace, built by a Florentine banker in the previous century, is surrounded by the magnificent Boboli Gardens. These expansive Italian-style gardens, adorned with numerous statues, served as the backdrop for the Medici's grand festivals. From the Boboli Gardens, one can admire the splendors of the city, witnessing the passage of centuries that seem to leave everything untouched. However, caution must be exercised, as this extraordinary heritage has been known to induce a phenomenon called Stendhal Syndrome. In 1817, the renowned French writer, overwhelmed by the beauty of Florence, experienced feelings of faintness that, according to the medical specialists of the time, were triggered by an overdose of beauty. Thank you for watching our video and exploring the fascinating world of Florence and its rich history. We hope you enjoyed this journey through the Renaissance and the remarkable legacy of the Medici family. If you found this content engaging and want to discover more captivating stories about art, culture, and history, we invite you to subscribe to our channel. By subscribing, you'll never miss out on our upcoming videos that will continue to take you on immersive adventures to legendary cities and iconic landmarks around the world. We appreciate your support and look forward to bringing you more exciting content in the future. See you in the next one.